Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jay Kumar. I make lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. Having studied the effects of partial balancing of locomotives in our previous video, let us solve a numerical problem on balancing of two cylinder uncoupled locomotives in this video. So let's get started. Before we proceed with the numerical problem, let us have a quick recap of the prerequisite concepts that are required to solve this problem. As we are aware, this particular topic is coming under balancing of two cylinder engines. This is the 3D isometric view of a two cylinder locomotive. As you could see there, we have two identical cylinders, cylinder 1 and 2, and identical cranks, crank 1 and 2. So these are two driving wheels in which usually balancing masses are being added. This is the top view of the two cylinder locomotive. These are the various notations that are being used in this study. The formula to determine maximum and minimum values of tractive effort, maximum swaying couple, hammer blow, and maximum speed of locomotives without lifting the wheels from the rails all are summarized from our earlier video. This formula we are going to use to solve the numerical problem. Now let us solve a numerical problem. There you are. This is the problem statement. The following data refers to a two-cylinder locomotive. The rotating mass per cylinder is 300 kg. Mass of the reciprocating parts, M suffix RE, is 330 kg. Distance between the wheels, so they have given us value of L. Distance between cylinder centers, 600 mm. So they had given the value of A. Diameter of treads of driving wheels. So they have given diameter of the driving wheels. So capital D is given from which we can find the value of R. Crank radius is given small r. Radius of center of balance mass. This is the radius of rotation of the balancing mass, which is small b. Locomotive speed, v, is given as 60 km per hour. Angle between cylinder cranks, 90 degree. Dead load on each wheel. So we represent the dead load as capital letter P. So these are the given data. Now let us see the required data. If whole of the revolving and two third of the reciprocating mass are to be balanced. So they have given C as two third of the reciprocating mass and whole of the revolving mass to be balanced. In that case, determine maximum variation in the tractive force, maximum swaying couple, hammer blow, maximum and minimum pressure on the rails, maximum speed of locomotive without lifting the wheels from the rails. These are the required data. Uh, for our convenience, I have listed down separately all the given data as well as the required data. From the diameter of the wheels, I found radius of the wheel. They have given velocity of the vehicle in kilometer per hour. I have converted this into meter per second. Now we are ready to solve a problem. The first subdivision is maximum variation tractive force. We know the formula to find tractive force which we have derived in our previous lecture. It can be easily found because it does not require the value of balancing mass. Here the value of C is known 2 by 3. MRE refers to mass of the reciprocating parts, 330 kg. Now we need to know the value of omega. They have given the locomotive speed as 60 km per hour, which is equal to 16.67 meter per second. 
and also they have given radius of the wheel 0.9 meter we know that the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity is v equal to r omega from this we can determine the omega value So we got the omega value. What is the crank radius value? 325 mm. Knowing all the values, one can now easily determine the racket data by merely substituting them. There you are, we have got the record answer for maximum variation in tractive force. Now let us find the second value, namely maximum swaying couple. We know that swaying couple value is equal to plus or minus a by root into 1 minus c m r e omega square r. Here A is distance between two cylinder centers is given as 600 mm. We know all the values. So by mere substitution, we will get this. This is my record second answer. We know that in order to determine the value of hammer blow, we should know the values of balancing masses that are we added at the two driving wheels. What we have to understand is we have unbalance in two driving wheels as well as in the planes of two cranks. So we will be having unbalance in four planes, namely plane A, plane B, plane C and plane D. Our aim is to determine the balancing masses to be added so that this two cylinder locomotive system is in balance. So this problem now is equivalent to balancing of four masses rotating in different planes. We have some five step procedure using which we can solve the problem. So step number one, I am going to draw the position of the planes. This 3D diagram is represented in two dimensional position of planes as shown here. L and A are given. Using them, we can find distance between all planes. The step number two, I am taking a suitable reference plane. The thumb rule is choose a plane as a reference plane in which we have many unknowns. I can choose either driving wheel A or driving wheel D as a reference plane. I choose here driving wheel A as a reference plane. Towards this right, I call it as a positive. Towards left, I call it as a negative. Now, let me draw the angular position of the planes. We know that two cranks will have 90 degrees with each other. So, let me assume position of crank B as horizontal. Then, obviously, crank C will be vertical. Next step is we need to find what are the masses acting on each plane. Mass at plane A is what we need to determine. We call it as a balancing mass. Similarly, what will be the mass that is acting at plane D? These two values will be equal because all are symmetrical. Therefore, balancing masses at these two wheels, when you solve, you will get the same answer. These two are what unknowns. This is what we need to determine. We know that at crank pins of cranks B and C, the whole of mass of the rotating parts of the cylinder and two-third 
of the reciprocating mass of these cylinders are to be balanced. So what will be the mass acting at plane B and plane C? Both are equal. It is given in our problem that the rotating part's mass is 300 kg plus the C value is given as 2 by 3 then mass of the reciprocating parts given as 330. I am getting 520 kg. Now the problem is a yeah, straightforward balancing of four revolving masses in different planes. So we can solve using the usual procedure. Let me table it here. Plane A is my reference plane. Mass of the plane A unknown MA. Radius of wheel is known? Yes, 0.65 meter. So centrifugal force is equal to M into R. Multiplying them will get this value. What is the distance from RP? This plane A itself a reference plane. So RP will be zero. Then of course couple centrifugal force value multiplied by distance we will get the coupled value it will be zero same way now let us find for b what is the mass that will be acting at b just we found that 520 kilogram what is the radius of the crank 325 multiplying them i get the centrifugal force now can you tell me the distance between reference plane and plane b the distance is 0.45 meter. Multiplying them, I will be getting the couple value. Same way, we can do it for mass C, pi 20, radius same. Multiplying them, I will be getting the centrifugal force. Now, what is the distance from reference plane and plane C? So, 0.45 plus 0.6. I will be getting 1.05 meter as the distance. Multiplying them, I will be getting the coupled value. Finally, let us do it for plane D, where we have MD, which is unknown. Then we know the radius of the wheel. So easily, one can determine the centrifugal force. The distance from plane A, reference plane, and plane D is 1.5 meter. So multiplying it, we have got the couple value. Once this table is done, can you tell me which diagram we can draw first? Can we draw force polygon or couple polygon? Since in the force polygon values, we have two unknowns, MA and MD. Whereas in the couple data column, we have only one unknown, MD. So obviously, we will be drawing the couple polygon first. So now let us draw the couple polygon. Choose a suitable scale using the magnitudes given in this column and the known directions of crank B and crank C. We can complete the couple polygon. So by using this data and the direction of crank B, we can draw this vector. Now, by using the couple magnitude for plane C and knowing the direction, we can draw the second vector as well. We know that for the system to be in complete balance, the closing side must be equal to this. We will be measuring this closing side and will be equating it with 0.975 MD. From that, we can find the one unknown, which is nothing but mass of D. There you are. We got the answer as 200 kg. And also, we know the direction. The direction of the closing side should form the closed polygon. Therefore, this must be the direction. Now, we can draw a parallel line, parallel to vector O dash C dash, in this angular position diagram, we will get the angular position of mass D as shown here. So these two lines are parallel. Now by measuring the angular position BOD, we can find the theta D. 
I am getting theta d as 247 degree measured counterclockwise from mass b. Knowing the md value in this force column, we will have only one unknown ma. So now let us draw the force polygon. Let me choose a suitable scale. This is for mass b. Using the magnitude of centrifugal force for mass c and the direction of the crank c, we can complete this. Similarly, knowing the magnitude of centrifugal force due to md and the direction, I can draw the next vector downwards. We know that for a system to be in balance, the force polygon must be closed. Therefore, this closing side must be equal to this 0.5 ma. So now I could measure this distance and equate with this 0.65 ma. I can get the another unknown known as ma. This is what answer I am getting. Now we need to know the direction at which this mass to be added. Draw a line parallel to vector OD here in the angular position of the cranks as shown. Now by measuring this angle between mass B and mass A, we will get the theta A. I am getting the answer 207 degree measured counterclockwise from mass B. There you are. So we got the four unknowns. So we have found the value of the balancing masses to be added at the rims of the driving wheels. Right. Having determined the balancing masses, now let us find the Ammer blow. We know the formula for Ammer blow plus or minus B omega square B. We already know the values of omega and B. Now let us quickly look into the meaning of this capital letter B. What this B denotes? B is not simply the balancing mass to be added at the rim. B is in fact balancing mass that accounts for mass of the reciprocating parts only. The 200 kilogram, the answer what we have obtained is the balancing mass that accounts for both rotating and reciprocating masses. But what we need here, capital letter B, is the balancing mass portion pertaining to only reciprocating masses. Because unbalanced force due to reciprocating masses only cause the hammer blow effect. So now we need to find the portion of the total balancing mass that accounts for reciprocating masses only. How to determine that? This is the formula. Let me explain this. Whole rotating mass plus fraction of reciprocating mass. This unit accounts for the total balancing mass. In this case, we got 200 kg is the answer. I want balancing mass for fraction of reciprocating mass unit. This is per unit multiplied by I need for this. I will get our capital B. Now we can find B value is equal to So we got the value of balancing mass for reciprocating masses only which is 84.62 that means the remaining 115.38 accounts for balancing the rotating masses which does not contribute to this hammer blow so this b value is what accounts for hammer blow now we can find the hammer blow substitute the values obtained b is 84.62 multiplied by The answer is plus or minus 18.86 kilo newton. There you are. We got the hammer blow answer.
Now we need to find the maximum and minimum pressure on the rails. It is given that the dead load per wheel is 40 kN. We know that maximum pressure on rails is equal P plus B omega square B. Minimum is P minus B omega square B. Please recall the hammer blow concept that we have discussed in our previous lecture. So I can get the answer as Fifty-eight point eight kilo newton is the maximum pressure on the rails. Similarly, we can find the minimum pressure. There you are. We got the maximum pressure and minimum pressure on rails. So let us move on to the final subdivision. We need to determine maximum speed of locomotive without lifting the wheels from the rails. We have derived this limiting condition equation in our previous lecture video under Ammer Below concept. So substituting all the known data in the above x we will get omega as twenty six point nine seven radians per second. It is better to give the equivalent answer in terms of linear velocity. Linear speed is V equal to R omega. R is radius of the wheel, which is given in the problem. Eighty seven point four kilometer per hour. What it means? It means that we should not be driving the locomotive above 87.4 km per hour. If you drive above this speed, the locomotive will be lifted off from the track, from the rail. That is the meaning. That's it. We have determined all the record data. As always, I have given you a similar problem for your practice. Try this problem at your home and you can check the answers given below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.